Hello everyone and welcome to today's video where I am going to show you how to make three landscape paintings that are beginner friendly. So for today's video you are going to need a canvas, a water cup, paint, and paint brushes and then we can go on with the project. I'm going to show you three different landscapes, easiest to hardest, and let's get started on these paintings. Let's get started on painting number one. This first painting is going to be a desert landscape, so we are going to be needing a lot of oranges, but first we are going to be starting by coating the whole canvas in a layer of blue. It's always good to start with a base layer. I'm just thinning it out with a little bit of water to make it spread easier and just to have a thin coat over the whole surface of the canvas. This will help our later paint to be a little more vibrant and to go on a lot smoother than if it was just going straight onto a blank canvas. And now it's time to add our first colors. So I'm starting off by making simple shapes that we can just fill in later. So I'm using this kind of deep orange, orange mixed with a little bit of brown to create these shapes. So I'm starting off just by creating these simple lines and filling them in. And then here we're going to start off with a simple gradient going in and adding a little bit of orange. Now we are going to start working on our next sand dune by making a similar shape and adding in a little bit of a lighter color. That way we can see this sand dune in front of the other one. And we're going to do that by adding in a lighter color and then adding darker colors in the back. But for now, we're just highlighting this edge. That way it really stands out from the other colors we used and they don't blend together. And now we're just going to fill in the rest of the blue empty spaces in the back. We're going to bring this sand dune down into the front and kind of end it there. That way we can have a little more foreground in the front. First, we're going to add a highlight just again to separate this sand dune from the one behind it. And now we're going in and adding that little foreground piece right there to really highlight that there are different layers of sand throughout the painting. And now we are going to do the highlighted side of the sand dunes. So we're gonna bring in that bright warm yellow we just added and then mix it in with a little bit of orange to create a gradient. And then we're going to do the same thing on this top sand dune as well. So we're going to add our lightest color being this yellow on the right side and then we are going to slowly blend it out with some orange in between that and then finally that similar color brown orange that we used before on the far far right side of the painting but we're just going to blend that out like it's a hill going down the side and then after that we have our base layer completely finished so we're just going to go over everything one more time I'm using sort of simple paints that you can just find at any store I want this to be super user-friendly and anybody can do it, nothing too expensive or crazy, but it means we're going to have to use a few layers of paint to really get the effect that we want to get and make everything look smooth. So I'm doing the same thing we just did, just one more time to really blend everything out and to make it all look a little more polished and a little more finished. So once we have all of that done, then we can go in and start making our definition a little bit more, adding a little more details and bringing this to the next level. But first, we're just going to finish off adding in all of those colors again. I'm trying to be really careful going around the sand dunes and really add in the distinction between the lit up side of the sand dune and the dark side of the sand dune. Now that we have our colors looking a little more vibrant, we can go in with some finer details. So I started off by putting some of this brown on the side of the mountain just to add a little bit of texture to it. And now I'm going in with a very light yellow and putting in some sand patterns and just some highlights on the sand. That way it looks like there's a little more dimension and texture in the sand dunes. So I'm doing that to the bottom and to the front right of the sand dunes, the side that is being hit by the light. I really want it to pop at the top and really be highlighted that this is the peak of the sand dune. I don't want your eye to be tricked in any other way. Art's kind of an illusion in that way. You have to make your eyes see what you want them to see by using different colors and lighting techniques and all of those things. So I went ahead and just added that in and then I took a darker color to match the background but highlight it a little bit more. And then I took a dry brush which is just when your paintbrush has a very little amount of paint. That way when you sweep it across the canvas it's a little more light and just a touch of paint on the canvas just to add in some more texture on the rest of the sand dunes. And now it's time to work on the sky, which is where color theory really comes into play because this light blue makes the sand dunes stand out a lot more than that gray blue that we have in the background. But the gray blue was a great base for us to have some color behind it. That way, if anything shows through, we already have blue in the sky. So it was very helpful to use blue in the background to help our orange pop. But now it's time to really make the orange stand out. So I added in this light blue and now 
now we're adding in the sun. I just took some white and then put white around it and blended it out very well into the rest of the sky. And then I thought this really could use some clouds to really make it. So to make the clouds, I'm just going to the left and to the right in little strokes, just having very little amount of white paint on my paintbrush in order to create this effect. And then once I finished with the clouds, this was almost complete, but I felt like it needed one more tiny little detail. So I took in that dark brown we were using at the very first time and I added in a tiny little cactus on the bottom left side. I just felt like it would really tie the whole thing together and this is how painting number one turned out. So now it's time for painting number two. This painting is going to be of a mountain landscape, so let's get started. I chose to use the color green as a base, but for this one, you should really pick whatever color you want. It's going to be more of a monochrome painting, which means we are going to use a very similar color family. So mine is going to be very green, blue, that kind of color family, all of these colors, but you can pick whatever colors you want. It could be purple, pink, whatever. You get the picture, but you can follow along the same steps in whatever color you want to get whatever color mountains you want. So I'm starting off by just shaping out my mountains with this kind of very blue green color and then I'm going to start shaping out the mountains that will be in front of those mountains and we're going to go from lighter in the background to more vibrant and darker in the foreground because that's how our eyes see things so it will help us to create the illusion that the mountains in the back are further away and the mountains in the front are closer even though they're all on the same canvas. So then we're going ahead and just adding in our base layer trying to make things have definition and shadows. So I'm going ahead and creating a middle mountain as well that will be a middle range tone between the lightest shade and the darkest shades that you're using. And then we're going to just blend everything out so we have a really rough base sketch to start with. And then I want trees to be lining the front of the mountain. So this is how I create my trees. I start at the top and just do very tiny little strokes and then go down and go wider as I go but not too wide all at the same time. And for now we're just going to blend all of those out so we remember where they go but they're definitely not finished yet. So now that we have our base layer completed we can get started on adding in a little bit more details and definition. So right now I'm starting off with the very back mountains first and I'm just going in and adding a little bit more color to them and just being very soft with my paint and just adding in some deeper shadows to the sides. For this one I am also going in and just adding a little bit more paint to it just really trying to get a layer on there that we can work with and now I'm going into the foreground mountains and adding in black to the top of them just to really darken them and make them contrast the back of the mountains and I'm just blending all of that out into a gradient going into green and then a lighter green as well just to really make sure that it fades nicely into the foreground and kind of looks like a soft transition and now it's time to work on the trees again so I'm going in with a very deep dark green almost black but I'm using black black on these side ones that are in the front to really emphasize them and then I'm going in and just starting at the top like I said and dab dab dabbing my paintbrush to create a little bristly texture. So I'm starting from the top dab dab dabbing my way getting bigger as I go down and now it's time to go back to the top. Painting is a lot of reworking the same areas till they get to looking like you want them to. So I'm just going back and forth with the same colors just really making sure I'm blending everything out. Out using very similar techniques until I have the layers that I want to achieve. So for this I wanted to create more mountainous look so I decided to go ahead and add in some black in the shadows and crevices and then it's time to work on the sky. So I decided for the sky to kind of keep it light and in the same color family like I said before as the rest of the painting I'm dry brushing that same color of the sky into the mountains just to add in some lighting effects on everything. This will really help it all to just go together and be unanimous in everything. To keep it all uniform, I'm also going to add in some lighter greens to the trees as well, just to add in some lighting to them as well. That way it all looks like it's being lit by the same light source. And I'm going back in and working on the sky. I decided to make it lighter at the bottom and then a little bit darker and deeper at the top. And I also added in a little bit of blue green just to make it look more like a sky. And now I'm adding in my little sun and some clouds by using the same techniques that we did on the first painting painting, just going left to right with very little paint and a very light hand. And now I'm adding in my final details. I thought these cute little birds would make a great addition to the painting. And now this one is complete. So now it's time for painting number three, which is going to be beach themed. 
This painting is probably the most complex, but it is also my favorite. So for this one, we are starting off with an orange base, which is kind of a bold choice for a beach. I know blue would maybe make a little more sense, but for the sake of this painting, orange is going to work out perfectly. So we're starting off by just making out these simple shapes and doing everything in layers. So we're going to create this first layer with this middle tone blue, kind of deep, and then we're taking a lighter blue and putting that right next to it and creating this shape with it in front of it to create a different layer of water. So then after that, we're going to take an even lighter shade of blue and create another layer in front of that. That way it looks like things are going from darker to lighter gradually. And then after this, we're going to go back to add some light blue in there just to make everything go together. And finally, we're going to take a middle range blue again, just a little bit lighter than the deepest blue that we used before and kind of go in and fill in the rest of the orange that is showing there in between everything. So now we have our base water layer. Now we're going to add in some sand, which is going to be a warm yellow that we're going to put on the base. And then I wanted this little hill in the background. So we're going in with a green and starting off with a lightest green color. And then we're going to add in a deeper green for the next layer and then an even deeper green for the bottom layer. I also added two little baby mini islands in front of that little island. That way, you know, just to be cute. And then after that, I'm going in and redefining all of the colors since we need extra layers on everything. So I'm going ahead in with the same colors and just making everything smooth and making sure everything is one flat color and that you can't see through the paint and see through the canvas. This is kind of a boring step, but a necessary step when using thinner paints. So we're going to go ahead and just do all of that real quick and fill in everything with the same colors that we used before and just make sure that everything is smooth and looking like nice and how it should. And then I'm doing the same thing for the island as well, just to make sure that everything's in layers and in colors. And we really want to keep everything separate for this. That's the style we're going for this painting. So I want to make sure all of my colors are distinct as well. And now it's time to work on the sky, which is why it's good that we left the canvas background orange, because this will help us with this sunset that we're going to create in the background. So I'm starting with a light yellow orange at the bottom and then I'm adding in some hot pink because you know you need some pink in your sunset sky and then I'm finishing off the top with some orange and now it's time to go back and work on the water. Now we're going to be adding in some highlights to the water and just make some reflections and make it look a little more detailed and gradient. So I'm adding in white to everything and then I also decided to add in a little bit of white on the shoreline there to make it look like there was foam and I also took some dry brush white and went ahead and put it and blended it into the rest of the water. That way it wasn't so blocky. And then I thought it would be a cool little artistic choice to go ahead and add in some little waves in the sky. I thought this would just fit the style and theme of this painting to add in some cute little light waves. So I went ahead and added light yellow and some light pink waves in the sky. And now it's time to work on some clouds. So for these clouds, I want them a little more defined than in our other paintings. So I started off with a solid white, made the top of the clouds, made them all roughly, and then dried my brush off and just took the remaining white and blended it into the canvas. We don't want the clouds to look too forced. They're very organic shaped, so you have to be very light with your hand and kind of let it just go wherever it takes you. And then I felt like the water could use a little more detail and definition, so I decided to take a dark blue and kind of underline some of the waves and some of the different shading areas. That way it looked like the water was deeper in some areas and more shallow in other areas and just to add a little bit more light to everything that way it would look a little more finished and intentional and now I'm a sparkle girly so I decided to take some white and add in some sparkles and highlights to all of the water just to add a little more detail and to make it look a little more magical because I love when art looks that way and then I just added some finishing highlights on the island as well and then to finalize everything I wanted to add one more final detail and put a little plant in the bottom right corner to complement the green island in the left middle of the painting. So now that we have this one completed with highlights and grass, this one is done as well. I love the beach and sunsets and this one came out so magical, but let's look at the first painting again. This is the first painting we created, which is of sand dunes, and we started off with a blue base and created these beautiful orange sand dunes. 
For painting number two, we made this beautiful green mountain landscape complete with little birds and a beautiful sunset green sky, but you could choose whatever color you wanted. And finally, we have this ocean landscape, which I think is my favorite. I just love the sunset and the warm, vibrant colors, but let me know which one of these three was your favorite and let me know if you tried one of these. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember that art is just something fun that you can keep trying over and over until you get it right. Thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe if you made it this far and if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!